Did you know that the BF Diamond Empire was founded by a genocidal white supremacist called Cecil Rhodes? Did you know that the BF Diamond Empire was built on the blood of black Af African indentured slave labor? Did you know that De Beers founded apartheid in South Africa and today De Beers bankrolls apartheid in Palestine? De Beers founded apartheid. After, De ba after diamonds were discovered in South Africa in the late 19th century, Cecil Rhodes, with funding from Rothschild, formed De Beers Consolidated Mines. Black Africans, traditionally farmers, didn't want to work in the De Beers diamond mines. The mines were death traps with no regards to safety. 5,000 Africans were killed every year in the mines. So De Beers boss Cecil Rhodes, also Prime Minister of the Cape Colony, passed racist segregation laws to help force black Africans into indentured slavery in his diamond mines. These laws later formed the basis of apartheid in South Africa. De Beers also created slave camps. De Beers created closed labor compounds, which were in effect concentration camps for forced black labor, labor to work in the diamond mines. Africans were imprisoned behind high walls with barbed wire, forced to work a grueling 14-hour day until their contract ended. Rhodes had legalized torture of blacks and made it illegal for them to leave their jobs. Tens of thousands of Africans died in these camps as a direct result of forced labor, inadequate shelter, negligible food supply and non-existent medical attention. With so many dying, De Beers sought the help of a Portuguese slave, slave trader to supply Africans from a far, as far away from the, as the Mozambican coast. When this still wasn't enough, De Beers signed an agreement with the state to establish private prisons where inmates could be used as slave labour in the mines, an early example of the prison industrial complex. These racist laws for exploiting black Africans in De Beers, De Beers diamond mines were codified into laws for implementation right across South Africa and later formed the basis of South Af apartheid in South Africa. De Beers planned on expanding apartheid across Africa and it didn't end there. Rhodes believed it was his duty to take Africa for the white Anglo-Saxon master race. He proudly proclaimed his forced segregation laws, which restricted the 70% indigenous black African population into just 7.3% of their land as a bill for Africa. A blueprint to implement right across Africa from the South African Cape to Cairo in Egypt. To kickstart his plan, De Beers financed a mer private mercenary army to invade and occupy what is today Zimbabwe and Zamb Zambia, resulting in the slaughter of 60,000 Africans. Rhodes named his stolen land after himself, Rhodesia. De Beers blood diamonds. Blood diamonds are diamonds that form human rights violations. De Beers diamond empire was clearly founded on and run on blood diamonds. The human rights violations that blood diamonds are bankrolling is not limited to Africa. Today the Bears is bankrolling apartheid in Palestine. The Bears bankrolls apartheid in Palestine, yes, following Rhodes' blueprint. Zionist colonists consolidated their occupation of Palestine by turning it into a Zionist, supremacist, apartheid state by forcing the surviving indigenous Palestinians into what is today less than 9% of their land. The Beers, with a 90% monopoly on global diamond production, helped kickstart apartheid Israel's diamond industry by supplying a hundred million dollar worth of rough diamonds, yes, to the fledgling apartheid settler colony for cutting and polishing. In the early years, Israel, with no foreign currency reserves, was nearly bankrupt. Its two exports were, with the Biz help, 
cut diamonds and stolen Palestinian Jaffa oranges. The Bears blood diamonds helped sustain Israel's apartheid regime from its inception till today, funding its war crimes against the indigenous Palestinians. Today, diamonds are Israel's number one industry by far. In 2018, its net export of diamonds was worth $7.8 billion. Diamonds account for nearly a quarter of Israel's total manufacturing export. The Rears sells around 90% of his rough diamonds to a few select partners known as seat holders. Nearly 20% of those seat holders are part of Israeli diamond bears. This figure does not include Israeli diamond companies. Outside Israel, like the Accord, formerly called Steinmetz Diamond Group, a close TVR's partner who had adopted Israel, its notorious Jibati Brigade of the Israeli Army during Operation Cast Lead in 2009. The Jibati Brigade stands accused of war crimes and possible crimes against humanity by the United Nations Rights Council. Nelson Mandela has famously said that we know too well that our freedom is incomplete without the freedom of the Palestinians. Help Palestinians achieve this freedom by helping end apartheid in Palestine, by boycotting Israeli diamonds today. Archbishop Desmond Tutu said in South Africa we could not have achieved our democracy without the help of people around the world who through the use of non-violent means such as boycotts and divest divestment encourage their governments and other corporate actors to reverse decades long support for the apartheid regime. The same issues of inequality and injustice today must motivate the divestment movement trying to end Israel's decades long occupation of Palestinian territory and the unfair and the prejudicial treatment of the Palestinian people by the Israeli government rolling over them. We are here today on Palestine's Day to urge you to boycott diamonds that fund war crimes to boycott the blood diamonds like those on sale at D-Bears. Boycott Israeli diamonds. Boycott Israeli diamonds. Most, most jewelers sell diamonds processed in Israel, including their bears Katia, Nevev, Tiffany, Dra, Sosa Bears Diamonds, Beaver Box, Signet, Ash Samuel, and Ernest Jones. An engagement ring is meant to 